All right, let's start by picturing something simple, maybe something relatable. Imagine uh, you're looking to buy a car. Okay. You've done your homework, right? You know the make, the model, and you figure it's generally worth let's say, around $22,000. Got it. A baseline value. Exactly. Now, you, as the buyer, you naturally want the best deal. Maybe you offer $21,000 or, you know, even try for $20,500. Sure. You're trying to buy below what you think is fair value. But the seller, the dealership, they're thinking profit. They're pushing for maybe $23,000, maybe more. It's that classic push and pull, isn't it? It absolutely is. And, you know, that fundamental dynamic, mm -hmm. that negotiation over just one car, it's actually uh, playing out constantly. All the time. All the time. Where? Across every market you can think of. Stocks, futures, commodities, even like the price of stuff in your local shop. Huh. And this is really the core insight behind something called auction market theory. Ah, okay. Auction okay. market theory. So we're basically looking at how markets work, but through the lens of, well, an auction. That's it. Our source material for this deep dive, it's a YouTube video, and it uses that exact car analogy to explain things. Right. The car. It explains how this continuous auction process, this back and forth, establishes what the market you know, collectively thinks is value. Okay, so the goal here isn't just about the price itself. Precisely. The, the mission, really, yeah. is to help you look beyond just, okay, where's the price right now? And instead, think about where that price is relative to this idea of value. Value that the market is constantly trying to figure out. Exactly. Discovering and defining it. And the source uses that car example perfectly. It's a great starting point to grasp this. Fantastic. So, okay, let's stick with the car. The market's consensus, its value area, is sitting around $22,000 based on, you know, past trades. Right, established value. So what does option market theory tell us happens if, for whatever reason, the price gets pushed way above that? Say it climbs up to $24,000, maybe even $25,000. Okay, well, think about buyer behavior then. If you, the buyer, know the car is generally worth 22 ks are you still jumping to buy it at 25 k well, uh, definitely not. No way. My urgency just vanishes. I know I'm paying way too much, way over the perceived value. Right. Demand from buyers like me would just dry up. Right. Pretty fast at those prices. Exactly. Buyers become hesitant, passive. Okay, now flip it. What about the sellers, the dealerships with the cars? Oh, they must be loving it. Seeing people willing to pay thousands over the established value, mm -hmm. they'd be like tripping over themselves, trying to sell as many as possible at 25K, they'd get incredibly aggressive. Right. So now you have this, yeah. this imbalance. It's like very eager, aggressive sellers. Yeah. And they're meeting these reluctant, passive buyers at that really high price. So what's the natural outcome in an auction dynamic like that? Well, the price has to come back down, surely. There's just too much selling pressure compared to the buying interest up there. It gets pulled back. Pulled back towards where people actually think the value is, around that 22K. It tends to revert, yes. And the theory says the opposite is true, too. What if the price falls, like, way below that $22,000 value, down to, say, $19,000 or yeah. even $18,000? Oh, okay. Well, my interest as a buyer would suddenly spike. Big time. $18K for a car worth twenty two k That feels like a steal. A bargain, yeah. I become really aggressive then. Maybe even thinking, hey, I could buy this, maybe do a tiny bit of work, flip it for closer to the real value. Makes sense. And the sellers at $18K. Oof. They'd be pulling back hard. Selling at $18,000 must be painful. Could be below their cost even. Right. They'd only sell if they absolutely had to, I guess. They become reluctant. Uh -huh. Passive. Exactly that. Reluctant sellers meeting really aggressive buyers at a low price. That imbalance, it creates upward pressure, pushing the price like where... Back towards the $22,000 value area. Yes, back towards that area where the market participants you know, previously found that consensus on value. Okay. And the source material notes that if you actually looked at where the deals happened, the transactions, as price moved above and below 22K. You'd see most of them clustered around 22K. You'd likely see a concentration, yeah. A lot of activity or volume clustered right around that mark. So most of the actual buying and selling, the handshakes, happen closest to where everyone kind of agrees the value is. Precisely. The source describes this resulting pattern, this distribution of traded prices, and that area of highest activity where the most deals actually got done, that's where the market established value during that time. Gotcha. Understanding this constant process, price exploring away from value, maybe because of temporary imbalances. Right, like too many sellers or too many buyers for a moment. Uh-huh. And then reverting back to value because, well, that's where most willing buyers and sellers actually agree. 
That's fundamental to auction market theory. It gives you a totally different lens. You're not just looking at the number, the price, but where that number sits relative to this value area. Exactly. It's location relative to established value. That's really fascinating. So the market is this ongoing auction. Participants define value by trading. Price swings around that point. Mm -hmm. But um, this value area, it can't be set in stone forever, right? Markets change. Oh, absolutely not. They are incredibly dynamic. That tendency to revert back to a specific value area, yeah. that holds true only as long as the market's collective view of the asset's worth doesn't fundamentally shift. But things do shift. Constantly. Markets are complex systems. Yeah. You've got countless participants, all with different reasons for trading, different time horizons. And crucially, new information is always hitting the market. Okay, right. New information. That's the next key piece, isn't it? What happens when something significant, some new info actually arrives? Let's stick with our car. Okay. The source talks about some bad news breaking about our $22,000 car model. Yeah, imagine something like a major flaw is discovered, something costly. Maybe it genuinely reduces how desirable the car is or you know, adds a big expense. Let's say it needs a $10,000 fix. Ouch. Okay. That's powerful new information. It fundamentally changes the perceived worth of that car. Right. So the market's idea of value for that car just isn't $22,000 anymore. The info just reset the whole game. Exactly. The new information didn't just cause a temporary dip in price. It shifted the value area itself, fundamentally. So price won't just snap back to the old 22 k level this time. No. It's unlikely to keep reverting there. Instead, price will probably trend down, right? Mm. As buyers adjust their offers based on this new negative reality, the auction process isn't reverting anymore. It's doing what? It's now seeking to establish a new area of value, mm -hmm. one that reflects this updated information. And the source suggests this downward trend might continue until a new value area is found, where buyers and sellers find a new agreement point, mm -hmm. maybe like down around $12,000. You know, the original 22 k minus that 10 k fix. Should be. And at 12 k maybe buyers finally feel, okay, this price makes sense now, even with the problem. I can buy at 12 k put $10 go in for the fix, and basically have a working car for the original 22 k total cost. That feels fair. Precisely. At that much lower level, buyers might become aggressive again. They see value in the new context. Meanwhile, sellers become reluctant to go any lower. And boom, a new value area starts forming around 12 k the auction process starts establishing value there. That's the idea. It finds a new equilibrium. What about good news, though? The source mentions something about what if the problem, the flaw, wasn't actually real? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting point from the source. If new information comes out and reveals that the negative belief was actually false, like the car isn't flawed after all. Then the perceived value shoots back up. It can shift dramatically upwards, yes. Yeah. Price will likely rise, reflecting this big reevaluation. But here's what's really insightful, according to the source. What's that? In cases like that, price doesn't always just find some brand new, arbitrary higher value. Sometimes it can actually revert back towards a prior area of established value. Like back towards the original $22,000 level. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Back towards that consensus level where value was accepted before all the false bad news messed things up. Huh. That's a really key distinction then. New information isn't just causing random price jumps or falls it fundamentally shifts where the market thinks value is. Right. And price then moves kind of purposefully to discover or establish or maybe even revisit that value area. And what's fascinating is that the underlying mechanic, that auction dynamic price exploring, finding acceptance where deals get done and reverting, that's constant. Always happening. Always happening. But the target, the value area itself, that's fluid. But it's constantly being redefined by everyone participating and reacting to new information. And this process is playing out everywhere all the time. All the time. Whether you're looking at, you know, gas prices or tracking major currencies or stocks, it's the same underlying principle. Okay, let's try and um, pull this together a bit. We've talked about how this constant push and pull, buyers and sellers at different prices, how that creates an area of value where most trading happens. The established value area. And we explored how price tends to snap back or revert to that area if it moves too far away because of like temporary imbalances. Mm -hmm. Buyers getting too eager or sellers getting too eager for a moment. And then we saw how crucial new information is, not just for nudging the price, but for fundamentally shifting where that value area is located. Price then has to go searching for that new equilibrium. That's a good summary. I think the really critical takeaway from our source material here is the emphasis on understanding value in markets. Not just focusing only on the price ticker. Exactly. Price is just the current quote. 
right? Yeah. Understanding its position relative to where value has been established, mm. well, that gives you a much deeper perspective on what the market is actually doing. Yeah, thinking about markets as these sort of tireless auctions, constantly searching for value, solidifying it, that could really change how you look at a price chart or even how you react to economic news. Definitely. Whether you're thinking about a stock or a house or even back to that car example, just recognizing this underlying value discovery process, it offers a different angle, a powerful one. It really helps you you know, try to see past the immediate noise and focus more on the underlying consensus or maybe the lack of consensus among all the market participants. Right. Okay, so here's maybe a final thought to leave you with based on all this. Mm -hmm. The source points out that markets are incredibly complex, right? Absolutely. So many participants. Yeah. Countless different players working on different schedules, different motivations, and they're all getting hit with new information constantly. It sounds chaotic. It can seem that way. Yet, despite all that complexity, huh. all that potential chaos, this fundamental dynamic price always seeking value is said to persist. It keeps happening. Mm -hmm. That's the core argument. So given this relentless drive for price to find value, even amidst all this complexity and this constant stream of news, what does that really tell us about the ultimate nature of market trends and maybe how eventually some kind of truly informed collective consensus manages to assert itself? 